buying or selling a property involves navigating through various costs and expenses. And as a buyer or seller, it is really important to know who is liable for the various associated costs, and more importantly, to really be prepared for all the hidden costs that you may be liable for. My name is Andre Forster from EXP Realty South Africa. My wife Lydia and I have been real estate agents in Cape Town's northern suburbs since 2005. Please remember to like and subscribe to all our channels to make sure you receive future property tips and updates. Okay, so let's start with the most common costs and expenses that the buyer or purchaser will be responsible for. Usually the conveyances or transferring attorneys will collect most of these costs from the buyer. So firstly, you get transfer duty or VAT. Transfer duty is a tax payable to SARS, the South African Revenue Services, according to the current transfer duty tables, and it is based on the amount of the purchase price of the property. So the conveyances will collect the transfer duty and pay it over to SARS. If, however, the seller is VAT registered and the purchase price includes VAT, then you will not pay transfer duty. Secondly, you get transfer fees and deeds office fees. So these are fees that are payable to the transferring attorneys for their services in facilitating the transfer of the property ownership, as well as fees charged by the deeds office. These are payable by the purchaser unless otherwise agreed in the sale agreement. Then you get bond registration fees. So these are fees payable to the bond attorneys who are appointed by the bank that grants the purchaser a loan. Um, so this is for registering the bond against the property if, of course, the buyer is taking out a loan and registering a bond. Then you get homeowners association consent fees. So if there is a homeowners association where the property is located, then this fee may be required for obtaining consent from the homeowners association for the transfer to take place. Similarly, you get body corporate levy clearance fees. If applicable, this fee is payable to the body corporate where the property is lo located uh, for them to ensure that all levies owed to the body corporate are settled and up to date at the time of transfer. Then you may get special levies also imposed by a body corporate. So if any special levies are payable, the buyer may inherit the balance on a pro rata basis and will then have to pay the balance of those special levies owing as from the date of transfer. Then furthermore, there may be costs of complying with special bond conditions. So if there are any special conditions that the bank has imposed on the bond approval, then the buyer will usually need to cover the associated costs unless otherwise agreed. A common example would be if the bank requires a valuation of the property as a condition for bond approval, then the buyer would usually need to cover the cost of this valuation. Then occupational interest pending transfer. So in cases where occupation of the property occurs before transfer takes place, the buyer may need to pay occupational interest as agreed be between the buyer and the seller uh, in the sale agreement. Then of course there are other costs as well, so don't forget to consider other costs such as uh, moving and packing costs, maybe redecorating or landscaping, uh, telephone and internet connections, water and electricity deposits, and so on and so forth. Okay, so now let's shift our focus to the sellers and the costs that the seller usually bears during a property transaction. Firstly, you get agent's commission. So this is the agreed percentage or amount of the final selling price that is paid to the estate agent for their services. Then you get certificates of compliance. So unless otherwise stipulated, the seller is responsible for obtaining all the necessary certificates of compliance, most of which are required by law, such as an electrical compliance certificate, uh, electrical fence certificate, gas compliance certificate, water bylaw certificate, if you're in the city of Cape Town, and if stipulated in the agreement, then also a beetle certificate. So the seller will need to pay for the inspections, as well as any repairs that may be required in order to obtain the compliance certificates. Then bond cancellation fees. So if there is an existing bond on the property, the seller will need to pay fees to the appointed bond cancellation attorneys in order to get the existing bond cancelled. Then penalty interest. So if a bond needs to be cancelled in this manner, then the seller may incur penalty interest if the bank was not given sufficient notice about the bond cancellation. Banks usually require 90 days notice uh, for the cancellation of a bond. Okay, then sellers are also uh, liable for advanced rates clearance figures. These are payments that are made to the relevant municipality to clear any outstanding rates on the property and to make provision for the upcoming rates until transfer takes place. Then levies payable up to the date of transfer. So if applicable, then sellers are responsible for settling all levies payable to the homeowners association and or the body corporate up to the date of transfer. 
Then again, special levies imposed by a body corporate. If there are any additional or special levies payable, the seller may need to pay these levies up until the date of transfer, depending on the payment terms. Then you get capital gains tax. So if applicable, sellers may need to pay capital gains tax on the profit made from the sale of the property. There are certain rebates, such as for a person's primary residence, etc. We have a separate video on our Frequently Asked Questions page, which you can look at uh, on our website, explaining capital gains tax in more detail. Then costs for homeowners association consent. So if required, the sellers will need to obtain consent from the homeowners association uh, for the transfer to take place, and they will need to pay the fees associated with that as well. So in summary, Understanding all these costs is essential to ensure a smooth and transparent transaction and also to ensure that property buyers and sellers are not caught off guard by any unexpected expenses. I hope you found this information helpful. Please feel free to reach out to us for further assistance or with any additional questions you may have. If we cannot answer them, we will direct you to someone who can. Also, to stay updated in future Please like and subscribe to all our channels on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and of course, TikTok. You can also visit our website, propla.co.za, which features a frequently asked questions section that answers many property-related questions. And if you need any advice, please get in touch. We'd really love to chat to you. Or if you're considering selling your property, let us discuss a customized marketing plan tailored to your specific needs. In the meantime, take care. Stay safe and God bless.